Okay everyone, this is the how-to on how to camo your recurve or longbow using just ordinary spray paint you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot or any other hardware store. Um, it's really neat because you can do a lot of creative things like stenciling prior to putting on your clear coat. Um, you can tell that I really love this camo paint job. Uh, it's taken me a while to really develop the pattern itself. Um, I've screwed up a lot of bows, screwed up a lot of things that I tried to rattle can, but uh, I finally got the hang of it over the last couple bows that I've done and I wanted to share it with you guys, show you how to do it. It's real easy. You can see I have a lot of materials out here in front of me on the table. We'll get to that in a moment. But before we get to that, I want to do a little bit of gear reviews for you. Starting with, this is the Border Tempest 19 inch riser. So you can see I do love this camo job. Um, my WF-19 is the same camo job with uh, my hunting set of limbs. And this is my new hunting rig as well. I received this from Joe Perini, thanks buddy, and it was silver anodized finish, and I did my custom camo job, and this limb, these limbs are SF Alt Pros, I believe they're 38 pounds on a 25 inch riser, so on this 19 inch riser, I'm shooting around 45, 46 pounds, um, I have the tiller bolts cranked in. This Tempest riser is shockingly um, accurate, and I don't even know why I'm saying shockingly. It is an absolute functional piece of art. Uh, there's so much deflex in the riser. So one of the design features I love is the amount of deflex. It holds in my tip, my flow to my tip is, is so minimized when I'm aiming off the tip of my arrow due to the amount of deflex in the riser. It's just, the shootability is amazing. Uh, another couple features that I love is this sight window here. You can actually see most ILF limbs will have a sticker between the U-channel and the dovetail um, itself on the limbs to where it has the sticker. It tells you the length of the limb and the poundage. They've designed in a little window here so when your, your bow is strung up you can look through that window know exactly what limbs you have with the weight on them. Really neat. Um, they come with a really cool custom bare bow weight here that goes into the stabilizer hole and then in addition to that they have custom small brass ones that they send with the risers and these button head cap screws get removed and you can start micro adjusting the amount of weight to get the balance that you want. It's really, really neat. Um, some other features I love is the coupler, the coupling on the tiller bolt. This little black sleeve here actually rotates in all degrees of freedom. So it guarantees a nice flush interface with the butt of your limb. I am just in love with this bow. I have uh, Dan Deckers, um, Dan's Archery at coxcox.net. Uh, the, his custom shelf plates. He does the side plates and the, and the shelf plates. Really innovative design for, for something so simple. And then I use an AccuTune to adjust side by uh, my center shot. I have my custom push quiver here from Drew and Andy Kohlhofer of Selway Archery. Um, I love this rig. I'm enamored by it. It's, uh, it's really, really accurate, uh, really stable, really forgiving. And this is probably what I'm going to be hunting with um, come the fall. All right. Moving on, the original bow I was going to camo. Corey Engert of Heartland Bows contacted me and wanted to make me a Get Primal Longbow. Um, I was really excited about the offer, his generosity, and took him up on the offer. He called me, we had a great conversation. He's amazing to work with, he's an incredible boyer, um, and he loves what he does. And he's really passionate about making bows perfectly to your expectations. Uh, this is the Heartland um, take or the Heartland one piece longbow. You can see it's a forward handle reflex deflex design one piece longbow. I love it. It's awesome. Uh, it's 64 inches, 46 and a half pounds at 30 inches. It's just it's really cool. It, it points really well due to the amount of deflex. His limb profiles are really unique, and there's a lot of preload as you start your draw cycle. And man, it just adds up tons of performance on the back end of your shot. And um, I'm, I'm really enjoying shooting this bow. I was originally going to do the how-to camo bow project on this. And when Corey sent me the bow, looking at the gorgeous woods he used, he used uh, Micarta in the riser for mass weight. He knows I like mass weight um, for stability. And I started looking at his glue lines and looking at how much effort he put into this bow. And I can't paint it. I just can't paint this bow. It's too pretty. Um, he actually tillered this slightly negative for me because he knew I was going to be shooting it from a crawl, which is really cool. So fully customized for me, and I love shooting it. So Corey, great job. 
and um, I'm in love with this bow. It's great. So now that I didn't have a bow to do this how-to, this camo how-to, I started shooting on Tuesday nights with Keegan McCain of Omega Longbows, and he had a little tiny, brand new bow, brand new design, 56 inch one piece longbow with him uh, a couple Tuesday nights ago. And he calls it the Omega Native. And this is the Omega Native. And I'm a guy that refuses to shoot any bow less than 64 inches long. And I was absolutely blown away at the performance of this little sweetheart. This Omega Native, the grip, he fully customized and shaped and, and uh, designed it off the Jaeger grip platform that all of us competitive shooters know and love. It just fits in your hand beautifully. This is 36 pounds at 28 inches and it's a 56 inch total length. And this thing points brilliantly. Uh, it's smooth through the entire draw cycle. Keegan has a nice long 30 and a half inch draw cycle. So any bow that he designs, any press he designs, that geometry of those limbs has to be smoothed out to his super long draw length. And I'm in love with this bow. I shoot it very well. I shoot it very accurately. And I started uh, working with Keegan a little bit this past Tuesday night. And talking to him, needing, needing a bow to camo to do this how-to review, we, uh, we came up with a deal. And I came home with it last Tuesday night. So this is the bow I'm going to be uh, camoing for you guys. So um, let's get into it. All right, it's a hot day, that means the paint will dry fast, so let's dive in. Some things that you'll need is your paint of choice, uh, basically your three camo colors that you wanna use. Now, something to note, your clear coat has gotta be matte finish if you don't want it to be sheen, a high sheen uh, for hunting situations. So I always use flat. Um, I like the Valspar brand, it seems to be doing well for me. And another thing to note, you'll see that these are flat, but I really liked this color as my base coat, but it was satin. Don't worry about trying to only restrict yourself to flat initial colors, uh, because as long as your top coat is matte or flat finish, it doesn't matter how much sheen your actual colored camo paint is. Um, so you need your paint first. You need some um, sandpaper, really fine grit sandpaper. You might need an X-Acto knife and some tape to tape off some non-paintable areas. I like to have some hardware, 5 16 24 hardware, um, some 3 8 16 hardware for tiller bolts, uh, other holes within a metal riser that you wanna plug. Um, and then at the last thing you'll need is whatever camo pattern you're gonna use, some materials to keep the paint off of certain areas and let it through in another couple areas. And we'll go over this later, exactly why I like this, these two items. Everything can be picked up at a local craft store like Michael's or a Lowe's or Home Depot. And I think total, these are about $3 a piece. And I think I might have another $5, $10 in my actual patterns. And there you go. You'll have a fully um, customized camo pattern bow instead of spending $150 to $200 on a, on a film dip. Okay, before we get going, I just want to note that this is a very durable finish. I've been hunting with this WF-19 for a long while and I beat the crap out of my equipment. And as you can see, it's still holding up very well, except for areas where you're constantly touching it, like right here under the grip where my thumb rubs every time I shoot the arrow. Or I stand there and put your bottom tip on your shoe and you put your hand on the top and you're always rubbing the top of your limb tip with your thumb. That usually wears off too, but other than that, the entire bow is really robust. This, this process is extremely robust. Okay, the first thing you're gonna wanna do is sand down your entire bow. I apologize in advance, Keegan, this is, has to be very painful for you, but you wanna rough up that clear coat that's on the bow from the boyer just so it, the paint adheres well to it. So it's very simple. Just grab a sheet of, of sandpaper. I'm using 400 extra, extra fine grit sandpaper. It's on like a polymer backing. It's really nice for getting in there. And all you're gonna do is start scuffing it up. Okay, 
all sanded up and all the sanding process is for is just to rough up the actual clear coat that's already on the bow. You don't want to remove the clear coat. You don't want to remove any weight from the limbs by taking down the, the actual black glass or clear glass that um, these laminated bows have. So this is ready. Um, you sanded it down. You can see as I was sanding it, it was turning white. I was just scuffing up that surface. And then what I like to use is um, acetone or mi mineral spirits just to make sure it's really, really clean, free of all the oils. Um, it's ready for its first coat of paint. So what I like to do whenever I'm camoing, I like to use start from lightest to darkest. So the first coat's going to be this green. Um, again, this is the satin finish, which doesn't matter because we're going to be finishing it off with flat. So let's head on out. Let's clear coat this thing. Or I'm sorry. Let's head on out and um, let's get this first coat of green on. And I like to wait about 15 to 20 minutes between coats. It should be still minorly tacky but you can handle it without any issues um, that ensures that your layers as you're layering up your different colors they kind of meld into each other it doesn't give you any kind of hard lines and a, a little goes a long way so we're not trying to have five different coats of paint on this real thick balled up all we're going to do is give it a very light dusting here and one thing, you don't have to be perfect with this because it is camo. So any blemishes, any mess ups that you might have, just you have two other options to, or two other chances to cover them up using the other colors. So let's go on out and uh, paint it up. Okay, before you start painting each layer, you're gonna wanna have a plan on how you're gonna handle the bow, make sure you're not really boogering it up or getting too messy. So I always try to test out dry how I'm going to kind of move my way along the bow with painting. So. With this setup, I set a piece of wood down here that has a nice deep knot in it. Um, you're trying to have interfaces on that limb on very fine points. Um, so I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to camo paint the entire upper limb. I'm going to get as much of the riser as I possibly can. And then I'm going to slowly drop that into the knot, lean it against there, and then I'm going to finish the bow off. Okay? So here we go. All right. Sorry, Keegan, in advance. Camo bombing this Omega native. Okay. So it probably looked like I was dumping a ton of paint on this thing, but again, very short burst. You're barely dusting it. Take your time. That's the key. All right, I'll give you some close-ups. So the nice thing about having a setup like this for doing this paint job is for takedown limbs, you can lay them this way. With a riser, you can lay the lattice on top and then have your riser <clears throat> on the lattice. For this one piece bow, it's going this direction horizontally. I'm gonna do the back first with the tan. This is the mid-layer camo. So we have our base camo. Again, this is satin, matte finish, matte clear coat, it's not gonna matter. We have this flat tan color and the mid layer so what i like to do with my camo pattern is start large and then work smaller and smaller as you put more coats of color on so this is going to be my large camo pattern that's going to be kind of hiding in the background um, underneath that last final camo pattern i'll show you that here in a minute but all you basically do is you're going to lay this i bought this at michael's uh, which is just a craft store locally here um, and this is a in the t-shirt section and it's just a template, it's a stencil. Uh, go into the stencils, you can use anything you want. This has given me a really cool pattern. So all you're basically gonna do is you're gonna lay it down on top of the limb and you're gonna wanna make sure that it stays tight to the limb as you're spraying. And again, light coats, that's the key. Light coats, you're just gonna take it easy. I like to work from one end to the middle, the other end to the middle, and then I finish off the middle, okay? So we're just gonna do this backside here and I'll get some close-ups.
So as one side of the limb, this, this uh, belly side of the bow, as this is drying, you can expedite this process a little bit by laying it, picking it up carefully, laying it down on its side, and then do one side of the riser as well. So I don't worry about doing this mid-level camo on the actual edge of the limb because you'll see whenever I go to do the third layer of camo color, you just wrap it around the limb and you cut, get coverage there. Um, so it's not a big deal, but all you do here on the side of the riser is lay it down just like you did on the limb and then uh, go to town. All right, so now I'm just gonna do the backing of the bow in the same way we did the belly of the bow, and that'll be it. So you can see me checking this out. One thing you wanna make sure is that you're spraying on the same side of the template per project, because you don't wanna lay tacky, wet paint on something you're not about to do, or else that's gonna be a mess. We have our base coat and our mid-layer camo all complete and, <clears throat> and done. Up to this point, I will admit to anybody, this looks corny. I, I don't enjoy how it looks at this moment. However, the really cool thing is once we get this really dark brown on, it really starts to pop. All we're gonna do now is use loosely woven burlap. You can buy it on the roll. 50 yards of it from Michael's craft store. And all I do is I lay it down over top of the limb real tight. And the reason why you want loosely woven burlap is so the paint can get through. And then I'll just kind of brush it across. I'll pick it up, make sure I like it, and, uh, and then move on down the limb. Okay, we got a little rain here, so this is a little delayed, but um, this has one coat of finish on it already. Uh, I didn't have the microphone on when I started recording, so I gotta say this all over again. But basically, prior to that, this first coat of clear coat, the color is like 
kind of flashy and the, the colors are real bold and they're real individualized. They're not blended in with each other. Using this flat Valspar indoor outdoor matte finish, flat finish, clear coat, really dulls everything. It blends all the colors together. Um, this stuff's really nice because you can coat it anytime after you spray it. So it's about dry, it's dry to the touch in about 15 minutes and you can just continue to put layers and layers on. So I like to put between three and five coats on and um, other than that, it looks good. So I, I typically coat it in the exact same way that I coat um, the base coat. I just hold it and I'm just gonna go after it. So here we go. And then you just come back and do that three or four more times and it'll be ready to go. So I'll show you the finished product here uh, in the next scene. All right, get prime. Okay, bow's all done. Looking really good. Um, one thing to note is my previous camo pattern, my standard camo pattern, the base green is a lot darker than what I use in this project. I was trying out a different green color just to see how I'd like it. You can see the difference of my original camo pattern and the new green camo pattern that I'm giving a try. Um, so I'll show you a couple side-by-side um, -side pictures of some of the other bows I've done. You'll see that this, this bow did turn out a lot lighter, lighter in color. But overall, it looks good. And so now I'm gonna do is just finish it up. I'm gonna put the quivers on, I'm gonna put my shelf plate on, and let's just shoot it. One last tip, if you want to, if you have a really glossy bow and you want to hunt for it for a season, um, use Plastidip. This Plastidip spray is really nice. You can spray it all over the bow and it peels off real easy within a couple minutes. It peels right off whenever you're ready to take it down. Um, it does, it's pretty durable, it holds up really well. Um, yeah, the Plastidip is a really good option for you. So, all right. Ready to go. All right, Push family, thanks for tuning in. This was the how-to camo spray paint a bow. Hope you guys learned something. Also, right below this video, click subscribe so you guys stay up to date with all of our new films. Also, check out our podcast. We have a super awesome podcast that we release an episode every single week. We're talking to these monster icons of our sport. We're learning a lot. We're providing tons of awesome knowledge, so you're not going to want to miss that. Get primal.